Thanks for joining our Web 2.0 class. This is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Let's take a look at how the web began. In 1969, the government established a military network that was known as ARPANET. The protocols that were developed during this time are the protocols that we still use today. Most notably, TCPIP, which allows for communication. FTP, our file transfer protocol, and some other protocols that have pretty much been outdated at this time. A few years later, some private networks were developed. These networks were more of a scientific and educational purposes. But together, they all formed a collection of networks which became ultimately known as the Internet. The World Wide Web was not developed until 1990, which is not that long ago. Tim Berners-Lee was the man who actually developed the web. He was working at a research lab and wanted to find a system for linking large amounts of information together. The result was the Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML, and the Hypertext Transport Protocol, HTTP, which should seem familiar to you. And there he is. HTML is the language in which the web pages are written in, which gives us the ability to click a link and go to another page, which is the whole basis of the web. The HTTP protocol is the communication protocol that the browser uses to send a request to the server, and the server uses to send the reply back to the browser. So the World Wide Web is essentially built upon HTML and HTTP. The early web browser was text-based, and it wasn't until 1993 that the Mosaic web browser was introduced. This was a graphical web browser, meaning that we could point and click, and it marked the turning point for the web. Mark Andreessen is the person who is credited for writing this software program, and he was working at the National Super Center for Supercomputing Applications at the University of Illinois when he created the first browser. The first browser has had most of the features that today's browsers have. Histories, back and forth buttons, etc. And this is a screenshot of the first graphical browser. Mosaic. In 1994, the Netscape Navigator web browser first emerged, and it was up until about 1999 that it was the most popular browser out there. Jim Clark of Silicon Graphics and Mark Andreessen contracted together and developed Netscape Communications. This was a company. And this was the company who rolled out the Netscape Navigator web browser. The, over the years, this browser started introducing many newer features which enhanced the web browsing experience. And a lot of those features were newer versions of HTML, which allowed us to see color and um, different layouts, eventually JavaScript, video support. And here we have our version 1 of Netscape.
There were other browsers emerging on the scene. Microsoft Internet Explorer was a little bit behind in the beginning and didn't really show its face until around 95. It took until 99 to catch up with Netscape and to surpass it. And then a few years after that, Mozilla Firefox. And these became the predominant browsers that we are still, that we use today. There are others, but these are the two main browsers that we are using. So let's take a look at the early web. The early web was pretty much read only. We could access the web page and we could read the information, we could print it. There was no interaction on it, other than possibly sending a form. You needed technical skills to create a web page. Only professional people were able to master the technology needed. The average person was not able to get on the web and to do anything. They were slow. After all, our hardware was no, not as, nowhere near as sophisticated as it is today, and web hosting was relatively expensive. Nothing was free other than the browser. Web pages in the very beginning were at a fixed size because monitors were only one size. And because, here again, the computer technology was nowhere near as, as advanced, the amount of colors that the web page could display was limited and varied. But today, a website is more like an interactive application that allows us to do just about anything. Let's take a look at this client-server principle that enabled the web. We have the web browser, which is called the client, and the web server. So we have the client-server technology. Now, they both speak a pro the language HTTP. So we're talking about the hypertext transport protocol that is enabled in both the browser and the client. So let's take a look at how this works. First of all, the browser sends a request to the server. For example, I might click on a link in order to request a web page. So I am sending a request to the server for a web page. After the request is sent, the connection between the browser and the server is closed. The browser sits and waits for a response. This is called synchronous communication. The server receives the request, processes it, and sends back a reply to the browser. After the reply is sent back to the browser, the connection is closed again. So here we have the client talking to the server, the server replying back to the client. But this communication channel is closed. It is not like a telephone conversation where we each have uh, the receiver at our ears listening back and forth. It is more like a letter being sent. You put it in the, to the, take it to the post office and you're finished with it. Once the server receives it, he sends it back and he is finished with it. And this is called synchronous communication. Very simple, but this is how we have the ability to communicate back and forth on the web. The web had quite an effect on business and communication. There were no more physical boundaries. Geographical location didn't matter anymore. Now we can communicate, collaborate, and work together no matter where we live. Money can be made on the web now. 
not only with the buying and selling of products, but the fact that in 1995, the Netscape Corporation rolled out its first stock offering to the public, it not only began this dot-com bubble, but signified that money can be made on the web.